Coming up on UPC, a recap of yesterday's incidents. Also, your weekend weather forecast. We have all this and much more, and it's starting right now. Good morning and welcome to the Friday, December 7th edition of the UPC Morning Show. I'm Sam Schmidt. And I'm Anetta Kozu. Today we begin with a run-through of yesterday's unsuspected events. At approximately 9.45 during second block, an announcement was made an alarm rang to evacuate the building. Rumors circled that a bomb threat had been called into the school. Soon confirmed by administration, safety precautions were taken as students proceeded to the football field. Officer Cavalieri, officials, and bomb dogs scoured the school in search of the device. Over two and a half hours later, students and administrators were given the clear to re-enter the school. The incident turned out to be nothing more than a false threat. And earlier we spoke with Officer Cavalieri about yesterday's events and the consequences of calling in a false bomb threat. Yesterday we received a call in the main office of a, of a bomb threat, that there was a bomb in the building and it was going to go off in 15 minutes. So I immediately got right on top of it. We evacuated school, which went very well, I thought. I called uh, a couple of my colleagues over, several units. And, you know, we had to take it very seriously. The whole school had to be searched, and I brought a bomb dog in, and we sniffed everything in the lockers and every nook and cranny, and uh, it was determined safe to come in. No device was found, and it was, uh, it was a fake bomb threat. Well, it's not the smartest thing to do. It, you know, phone records, phone companies cooperate with us. Our detectives are working it right now, actually, and, uh, you know, you're going to be found out. And um, you're looking at maybe three years in prison or more, depending on, uh, you know, someone got hurt while they were out there or, you know, in the course of uh, evacuating school, someone got hurt. You know, it's a lot of different things, enhanced penalties um, for, uh, you know, it's, it, it's a big to-do. We had to take us a lot of time to search school the right way, and it costs money and, uh, to tie up a school like that for three hours or so. And reporting a false threat could lead up to 15 years in prison and a $10,000 fine. Also, Mr. Schlereth and administrators want to thank everyone for their cooperation in the event of yesterday. If you are a writer or an artist, don't miss out on the chance to have your work in the CHS Laureate magazine. Everyone is welcome to submit their work. For more information, see Ms. Rothfeld in the library. Honk hits the countryside stage on December 13th through the 15th. The play is about the lovable story of an ugly duckling that we grew to love as children. Be sure to come out and support our drama club. The play begins at 7 p.m. And the Spanish Honor Society will be having their meeting after school today in Ms. Diba's room, K-9. Refreshments will be served. And now let's take a look at what we have in store for this weekend. Tiny? Hi, I'm Tiny Timerson, and I'm here in sunny Florida. Today's high will be a 79, and later tonight it will get down at to a chilly 57. Your weekend's looking good with highs in the 80s, and your lows will get to be in the mid-60s. Enjoy your weekend, Countryside High. I'm Taylor to the Tiny Timerson. Back to you, Anetta. Thanks, Tiny. Seniors that have pictures to appear in the Senior Slideshow presented at Senior Breakfast, please turn them in to K-1 or your senior class president. Your pictures can be printed or digital, but don't forget to put your name on them. Share your Kodak moments with your fellow seniors. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the latest news in sports. What do you have for us today, Brett? Well, Anetta, on Wednesday, an eight-player trade took place between the Detroit Tigers and the Florida Marlins. The players involved from the Marlins were third baseman Miguel Cabrera and pitcher Dontrell Willis. They were traded to the Tigers for six highly touted prospects, including pitcher Andrew Miller, who will be immediately inserted into the rotation this season. With the addition of Miguel Cabrera, the Tigers now have the most potent lineup in the league. Dontrell Willis will most likely be the third pitcher in the rotation. This trade makes the Tigers a favorite in the American League. The Marlins are currently rebuilding their roster for their losses. The JV's girls soccer team remains undefeated after defeating Northeast last night 8-0. Goals were scored by Ali, Leah, Rachel Mares, and Kaylee Mills. That's all I have today. I'm Brett Wozniak with UBC Sports. Back to you, Anetta. Thanks, Brett. Today is the anniversary of one of the most tragic days in American history, the bombing of Pearl Harbor. The incident drew America into World War II, which initiated fighting in the Pacific and ultimately led to the dropping of the atom bomb. Today is the day to remember those who sacrificed their lives. 
It was formerly known as one of the most popular rides in Six Flags, Kentucky, until a gruesome accident in June left a young girl without the use of her feet. The Superman Tower of Power lifts passengers 177 feet in the air, then drops them at a speed of over 50 miles per hour. Caitlin lasted her 14 endured painful injuries after a cable snapped and severed both of her feet. Doctors were able to reattach her right foot soon after, but unfortunately her left foot was too severely damaged to be repaired. But there is hope. Caitlin was reported to have taken her first steps with her new prosthetic leg and crutches. That's all we have for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Anetta Kozum. I'm Sam Schmidt. And I'm Brett Wozniak. And have I'm a wonderful day. Stay tuned for the soccer highlights. Pack it in, let me begin.